Hi, and welcome to Pursuit of Tomorrow. Howard Thurman said, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Now in the spirit of that, I've decided to invite anyone and everyone onto this platform here to help discuss the idea and how we can actively pursue tomorrow as opposed to just kind of passively receiving it. Now before we get started, I just want to say any support to the channel would mean so much to me. So like, comment and subscribe and without any more to say, let's get up into the episode. pursuit of tomorrow and welcome Jerome to pursuit of tomorrow you know thank you for, for coming through and being part of this <laughs> thank you for having me bro oh, thank man. you for having me <laughs> my pleasure so I'm gonna get right up into it now I first like to take a quick introspective look into yesterday so I know I asked you to bring two or three artifacts that you know bring about positive memories for you yeah. and yeah I wonder what you brought along okay so I'll start with this okay um so there's a video online, a music video, called Don Dada, which was kind of like the first video that I put together that brought back this, like, that brought back this fire inside me okay. for music again. But this was gifted to me by a stylist called Harris. Um, he's quite popular now in, in Southern Africa, especially Zambia. But then he was a nobody, and I had just come off a big like reality TV show. And I asked him, could he like style me for like one event? And he gave me the top, nice. you know, and it's a constant reminder whenever I look in my cupboard, like people have always been there for me, you know, like mm. they've always helped me um, through the hardest of times in my life. Okay. Um, you know, it's funny enough, like I'm here talking to you and I'm like, yeah, you're actually one of those people as well. You know, the whole London love video. Oh, yeah, yeah we, we, we like just cut it up and then you're like, yeah, cool. I'll come through and I'll do that. So it's, it's funny, it's like, things like this, I've got so many of them, if I were to think about it. So yeah. I, this one is just one of many pieces that I can right. look at and be reminded that the world actually does still come down to good people, you know. Mm. So yeah, this is one of them. Um, I'll move on to this, basically, mm. um, which is my partner and I, oh, yeah. yeah at her cousin's wedding this is before we got married um just after kioni we were going through a hard time and i put these two sticky notes down with her and she put there basically i love your and i appreciate your and whenever we get vexed with each other or just before like daily we would write down things to remember i love your sense of humor you know right. dance moves smile mm. like all all of this type of stuff you know and i appreciate your honesty you know mm. love for travel you know time for me and we just put down a bunch of things and this was mm. one of the things that i look at and it it takes me back to us trying to be positive and be positive together mm. you know so it was so this is another thing that i kind of hold quite there yeah. and we still keep it up like I, I, yeah, I took it off the wall just so that <laughs> I could like, and this which seems random <laughs> but my son my um Keone, my three-year-old well four on thursday oh. yeah um he basically did this for his little brother okay and it reminds me like the type of person that I'm bringing up, you know, as the mm. fatherhood and as well. It's like looking at fatherhood and how proud I am as a father to mm. be a father and then to see my son go and do something like this out of like no one told him to do it and thing and he's always he's very caring. Keone will make sure like if you're eating something and somebody goes up to your plate, he'll be like, No, 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 that's not yours you know, mm. like mm. ask so and so. Mm. You know, but he's always very thoughtful. So this was something that he he basically put together for his brother and Sweet, like yeah that. it kind of that that brings like a lot of warmth to my heart it's like okay 
we mu I must be doing something okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? Course, yeah. So those are kind of like the three, three things that I would say bring back a lot of positivity and a mm. lot of mm. warmth to mm. my heart, you know. It's like I'm constantly reminded of people, you know, people being people. Mm. And people have love. Like I think our default is, is happiness, you know, and, and you see it in, in babies. Like, so we're positive naturally. Mm. Mm. You know, it's neg like when things go bad, like with the, with the baby, if you think about it, they'll moan or they'll whinge if they're hungry or if they... Um, their diaper's messed, mm. but you fix that, mm. and then they're good. And it's the same thing, even as adults, is we'll moan and we'll whinge when there's something wrong. Mm. If you fix that, a default is happy. Yeah. You know, and that that like that, that when you say what what positive that like, these type of things remind me that we're happy people. You know, we're, we're positive. Mm. We, we always come from that space. Yeah, no. Before you actually move on to the next bit, it's interesting you should say that because. Just to backtrack, so like when we were doing London Love, yeah. I remember, you know, I know we'd met before, yeah. you know, I've always seen you around us on the Spice Roots, yeah. but it was just interesting how you managed to cross paths uh, once again over at CDI, and then like within a few, was it within a few days, Please. within a few weeks, yeah. it was like, yeah, let's go to London, <laughs> I'm thinking, right? I've got a whole YouTube video saying how much, <laughs> <laughs> how much I cannot hack, not even look out of all, like, like like, I lost it. I lost you, man. <laughs> like, an hour, an hour after we shot some footage, right? Now I found some next bedroom, and then straight after, I was like, Look, I can't stick with you, man. Like, you're going into the bustle of it. Like, I was like, I was like Man, I'm getting squeezed. I'm, I was just like, God, that, that, day, that day was like just a long, but the one thing that grounded me in that day is like, You know what? Go in there with you and proof, and just. Just kicking it, just you know, just being cool, being calm, and creating the space to be able just to show appreciation, appreciate love, it. and just just chill. Yeah. You know, I think it's it's interesting, obviously, bring it back to how not only is the individual happy, and you know, not only is that our default, but those experiences we're able to bring that out in others as well. Yeah. It just starts to cultivate they, this, yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, this yeah. safe space where people are just. Just happy to be present. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Just, <laughs> mind, just had to just had to reflect on that. Reflect one, on that yeah, one. Because, yeah. That was a yes, yeah, good experience. <laughs> yeah, it, it was that an interesting one. An interesting experience. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's like when I was with you guys, or oh, chill. Maybe I got lost and I'm there like busting around London. <laughs> what, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm there trying to find like, where was the car parked? <laughs> Hey. Hey, man. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but positive vibes, man. It's always been about positive mm. vibes. I mean, I've had a lot of lows in my life, and I've had a lot of extreme highs. Mm. Um, and just the realization—that's what like a lot of this stuff does—is it brings it, it brings you back to reality. Yeah, yeah. And as I say, just recognizing that the that people. The default is, is happy and good, you know, mm, like mm. we learn how to be different. Yeah. Like and that's that's the thing is it's learned. Like you're taught how to be um racist, you're taught right, how yeah. to be, you know, um <laughs> anyway, before mm. I go into it, but yeah, you're taught yeah, 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 you yeah, taught yeah. a lot of these things mm. and if you really wanted to to go back to that happy place, it's quite easy mm. because it's your default setting. It's like you just have to unlearn certain things. Yeah, I think that's the hardest thing. It's so much easier in theory to unlearn something, but it's like trying to listen to silence at times. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. you, you know, you can't chase that. You know, you have to actually take a step back, back. and allow all the silence to be around you. And then, then you'll yeah. accomplish that. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes when chasing happiness, you start to prioritize things that don't actually bring it about. And it's, it's, I know it's, it's definitely a struggle. You know, so I think yeah, it warms my heart that you're able to bring these things through and that they're able to not only do that for you but be that for you. Yeah. But yeah man, just uh just to keep things moving, I also ask you to think of you know, like a film or a song that you know again has some personal meaning to you. It's funny, I was like kind of good because I've got I've got this movie in my head that I always run back. Um it's my favourite movie of all time, I watched like eighteen thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> Which is American Gangster. 
Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. And it's odd because I was thinking, oh no, but there's songs, there's this and this, you know, and then there's the Stevie Wonder song in particular that plays back in my, my head as well, that kind of changed my whole dynamic of how I viewed music. Okay. So I'll start with American Gangster quick. Yeah. <laughs> American Gangster, when I first watched it, the performance that Denzel gave mm. made me reevaluate myself as an actor. Mm. Made me look at myself in a very different light. It was like, how do you embody something like that there and then carry that across? Mm. You know, it's like when you hate the bad guy in a movie, how, how, that guy has to be a good actor yep. yeah, for yeah. you to hate them. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, so that movie just taught me pretty much like life is it is that like it's 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 acting to a large extent mm. majority of the interactions that you have are not real mm. you know and watching the american gangster thing it's like you're looking at this and this is somebody's reality mm. but then it was very unreal yeah. a lot of the things that that, that you're seeing going on, that Frank Lucas went through, who is ma the main character. Yeah. They're unreal. Yeah. They're not like, he's, yes, he lived them. But mm. you think, you place that in the, in the day-to-day -day environment, and it's like, that's mental. Yeah. Like, you're able to kill somebody that easily. You're mm. able to then think that, like, the world, like, like the world that you, su like, support people mm. and stuff, like a certain community. Mm. You're able to fly halfway across the world in order mm. to, sell drugs in another part mm -hmm. of the world mm -hmm. it's mental yeah that's what, that's what i love about actors who are able to tell stories that were that are otherwise like untellable Tellable. yeah <laughs> because when you watch american gangster you'd be perfectly in reasonable state of mind to say that's just a good story yeah but then you realize that all of these of course stylized for the camera but, but all of these events played out so it's like know. what so you say, you, so you watch that and it was something about how Denzel portrayed that. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy that he, he manages to embody this thing and carry it through on screen to that extent. Because it was the first, for me, before Black Panther, mm. that was the first kind of movie, black movie I watched okay. that wasn't shot like black American movies as well. Mm. So it's like, Overall, as a movie, it, it, it showed me different aspects of creativity. Like, as an actor, I was like, yo, I am far off. I've got some, some, some yeah, trekking yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah. But it was like, everything is unreal, like in life, like mm. your interactions. It's like, you can, like, you move, you can keep it moving. You mm. don't have to stop. Mm. You know, like most people hit a dead end and, and they'll stop. And for the first time, I was watching a bunch of black characters mm. on screen. That were the main characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were not supporting, mm. and they were not in like it wasn't like some half something baked movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a proper production. Yeah. I was like, rah. Mm. It was empowering. So even when I hear people talk about Black Panther, I'm like, yo, do you know how many of those movies have existed before? Yeah. It's like that we we just not own it. Mm, mm. It's like so, I. That's that's why I go back to American Gangster. It just it, it made me feel like it's possible. You you as with your skin tone, mm, the way mm, you are mm, mm. coming from Africa because I watched it there first. It's like yeah, you can do this. Yeah, you can do this. You got this. You got this. Okay. That's what that that's what that did for me. American Gangster, um, and then Stevie Wonder. Um, it was the hotter than July kind of album. He's great. They did a greatest hit, but that album. Then isn't she lovely as well? That so let's start with isn't she lovely. My father introduced me to Stevie, and that was I think the first song that I had heard. And I heard somebody sing the way I wanted to sing. Mm. I was like, rah, what? How does this guy do this? Like, like he's up there and he's a grown man, and it's not too high pitched. It's not low. Mm. It's, it's that's that's where I want to be, mm. and. I remember listening to, to the compilation and each song was different. Mm. You know, it's like falling into different genres. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is an artist. You know, like somebody that can embody 
like folkish kind of sounds and R and B right. kind of sounds yeah. and country and then mm. like reggae and mm. he had everything in in his catalog. And when people ask me like, "Oh, Jay, you kind of do this thing," I'm like, "Yeah, this is where it came from." Mm. Like I wasn't the first person. That's actually the, that's the first thing I ever heard you song Stevie Wonder, right? Yeah. I remember. Yeah. The happy birthday. Yeah, it's my birthday. <laughs> yeah. We were all over at Spice Roots. And we were there on some chill thing, chatting about happy birthday. And then you just come through with the pure vocals. I was like, me and my uncle just sat there like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, this, is, this isn't our bit anymore. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. Yeah. 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 At the end, we just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't sing Jenny Roll that. <laughs> this might came true and set precedent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, so yeah, no, but that being said, so I'd say those are kind of like the two things that shape my life when I look back. You know mm. what I mean? Like those like that movie made me believe that it was possible mm. for me to do it as a a black creative right yeah. to do it on that level like you know to actually go the whole nine yards um and I th- i'd say stevie freed me to, to, oh. to experiment you know like it wasn't oh. like oh yeah you're just gonna sing this type of stuff you know it's like, oh you're just gonna sing r&b so mm. it's like no you can do what you want go for it i like that yeah. no I, li- I like how you put how you phrase that as well freed you to do that because I think it goes back to what I was saying, you know, you have to unlearn certain things. So when, yeah, I can, I can definitely relate, you know, when, when something just liberates you to a new, new creative, creative way of expressing yourself, mm. then, yeah, man, so you, you, just, <laughs> you just love to see it, you love to see it. So as we start moving into the pursuit of tomorrow, you know, what would you say inspires you to be even better? You know, you've kind of, you know, you've got your start point and obviously you're doing everything that you're doing now. But what differentiates you know, what differentiates you from the person you are now to you know, that what kind of be. Yeah. It's crazy when you think about it. Like you you hear you hear this quite a bit. I think was it um, Dickinson that put it down that you have to try and be better than you were yesterday like right. that's the competition is mm. you know they put like the the epitome of of a gentleman is one that is trying to be better than he was yesterday mm. so you stop competing with people you know and i already had that mindset before this the space i'm in now where every day i woke up i was trying to get to where i was going mm. so i've always had a clear vision from a very young age where mm. i wanted to be in the mm. entertainment world Right. You know, I've always loved theatre, film, and, and, and music. Like, I'm, I, I, I call myself the creative's creative because when I create, I know it's like it's hard for the world to, to understand it at first. Mm. So usually it's first the creative that go, wow. Right, yeah. And yeah. then they try and explain it mm. to people like, this is what he's, he, he did with this, mm. you know. And then gradually it cycles it down yeah, and then yeah. people are like oh okay so this person is this person mm. so I, I used to always call myself that was the tag the creator's creative um, and it's, it's, it had come from as I said me just constantly trying to be better than I was the day before you know it's like okay I want a thousand and something songs in my catalogue mm. so meaning I'm going to have to keep producing music for as long as I can mm. you know to make sure that I'm writing good content that is inspiring people to write more content and, right, yeah. you know, and collaborating with different people to get that done. Mm. So that's one of the goals. Um, I'm going to have a few big blockbuster style movies. Okay, so how do I work that through? Okay, I'm going to have to start with shorts. So like this year, I said, okay, I'm going to write a few scripts. Mm, you know, yeah. I put together about three TV show scripts as well as now two short films. I've got the scripts and now it's like, okay, working on the feature lengths. But it's like, I know that this year, all it's, it's about is having that tangible script. Yeah. You know, yeah. be, before I, I, I put down so much stuff prior to this, but it's, it's like having clear vision yeah. Yeah. where you want to be. And then now the new driving factor is my kids. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, especially having two young men, um, it's like 
men of color in this day and age as well. It's like we have very few heroes. Right. You know, there's a lot more, especially coming in from Africa, there's a lot more bad examples than there is good. Okay. Um, yeah, like you look at somebody like, let's just say Felakuchi, amazing musician, you know what I mean? He has all this music out and did really well for himself. But then you see his story and it's like, oh, he's a womanizer. Right, you know, yeah. and it's not something that I can resonate with mm. on that side of things. Mm. Yeah. Because then, and it's, it's filtered in, like you hear it in different conversations with a lot of different men, mm. where it's like, oh, yeah, 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 there's this girl and that girl, but that's not my life. I've right, never yeah. ever been that person. Mm. Yeah. So I can't relate to that. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at people like Tiger Woods and there's been that story. You look at people like Chris Brown, there's been that story. Mm -hmm. You know, people like Jay-Z, there's been a story. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. and the list goes on. So when you have like a Barack Obama, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have a lot of bad role models. Mm -hmm. They're still role models because they do some amazing things in what they do. Yeah. But there's a lot of negative, like negative yeah, connotations yeah. to what they, to who they but are as a brand. Yeah. yeah. Um, and people don't see that. People will always rush that to the yeah, side yeah, yeah. um but that's that's what it is so i guess me trying to be better and being that role model for my my sons mm. so that they're able to say yeah because that's what my father was to me mm. is my father was that man yeah you know worked hard yeah worked for his house looked after his family looked after other people's kids mm -hmm. you know like that was my father his house was always open when my like family like members were going through things aunts uncles and stuff the door was open he mm. never ever turned away anybody mm. and that was empowering to see you know my mom and my dad do that with their home mm. and be those people so i was like okay i've got a big role to fill yeah, yeah, yeah. and hopefully i do that by just constantly trying to build this vision mm. and add value to as many people's lives as possible you know, because at the, yeah. at the end of the day, that's the core of what I do. Yeah. I think people may hear entertainment and think it's about the money. You know, yeah, you have to be course. a multi-billionaire, millionaire, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Not really. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to add as much value to as many people's lives as possible. Right. And if I, if I can leave this world doing that, then... So that's your job. Yes, that's your job. Okay, cool. No, you're, you're very right in that, you know, because... Again, it goes back to be able to create a space, and once you've created that space for yourself, you have to wonder who else is watching that space. You know, so obviously for your sons as they're watching you, you're now the example. You're the blueprint. So yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but you do it well, man. You do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do it well because like from the moment that you and I first met, there was there was no. There was no buffer. There was no, oh, let me see see what this guy's about. It's like, no, nah, he's been good people from the get-go, you know. And when good people focus on being better each and every day, but like I said, you only ever cultivating on greatness, you know. So I respect you for that and I appreciate that. My guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Got you for that one. <laughs> same. Yeah. Same, same. Oh. Wow. It's deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously, you know, a lot about like, this this webcast here revolves around that Howard Thurman quote: "Don't ask what the world needs; ask what makes you come alive, and go do it." Because what the world needs is people that come alive. Now, of course, you know, you've touched on this, but in all your creative ventures, in all your say emotional ventures, or, or, or everything that's helped you build yourself up to be the person that you are, mm -hmm. if you had to fine line it what makes you come alive doing 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 what you love if you ask me in business it's it's it's, it's turned into this thing called your uh, minimum viable product right okay um and what that is is it's we you have this this idea for or this hypothesis of okay this is a problem that i want to fix this is the solution that you're hoping people will adapt to, you, you know, and and kind of be drawn to. And we live in a world now where 
you can see instantly if people are drawn to what you're doing or not. Right, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so to hear somebody go, yeah, I'm a musician, but I don't care about the likes, I don't care about the streams, it's like, mm, you, you kind of lie yeah, to yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, I work on this thing where it's like, just do it, get something there, mm. show up to the party, mm. and if they don't like it, give them something else. You know, but the doing is what you learn, you learn from doing. Because right, yeah. you're able to then dissect something and mm. cut it up different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're able to then go, oh, that doesn't work. I'm going to do something else. Mm. And you will also find the validation in the things that, like, by doing things, you, you find what makes you happy. So, like, from when I was a kid, I tried every sport. I never said, oh, well, like, I even, I was on, on I, ballet, theater, rugby, football, hockey, cricket. Tennis, squash, you name it. Mm. As long as it was there, I was going to go and try. Cool. And if I didn't enjoy it, if I didn't find myself thinking about it, mm. it's not for me. Yeah. You but know? You've got the experience. But you, but yeah. you, you just, so that's why when you ask me, like, that question about what brings you to life is the, <laughs> it's the freedom to try and do anything and not care what the world says. Mm. You know, if I get it wrong and people laugh at me, then cool <laughs> but i tried it mm. <laughs> and i know what it's like yeah do you <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you know yeah. so i guess it's it's a it's a free a freedom inside me that i probably i probably um cultivated over years you know like from from as i'm saying back when i was a kid mm. like i probably nurtured it and and that freedom of expression and freedom to just try things is what keeps me alive you know um it's like kids have it yeah like kids will play games and do things and climb on things and say oh that's dangerous but they'll try yeah. and that freedom yeah. you can see they're alive because mm. they, they're willing to try yeah. even if it's a bad idea they're still willing to try mm. we as adults we we the ones that go oh no i'm not going to do that or can you imagine what so and so is going to think if they right. see that yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like of internalize the judgment before, before it's, it's even, even yes. yeah before it's even there yeah. yeah so i guess and that's what i say like your your minimum viable um product can only be found which is the thing that sells basically mm. instantly can only be found by trial right and in business that's what what happens is you come up with okay yeah you are you want to do this thing why why shoot this straight away and take it out why not shoot short clip on your phone mm. asking one question mm. and then seeing if people resonate with that question and trying it on Instagram because mm. you'll know straight away because you can you can gauge that you get the metrics are there yeah. oh okay they resonate with this question mm. oh okay so I'm gonna add this in and then and if you build your business that way you're always giving customers what they want but guess what that does for you is now you're speaking their language you're getting more views you're hyped Right. You're gonna pull up to. You're gonna shop mm. the table every day. Yeah. Cause you're hyped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know you're giving. You you know you're you're making a valid point. Like you're mm. you're adding value to people's lives. You kind of replace the entire judgment with encouragement, like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you you can do that, and it's 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 simply by going. Okay, fine. How do I how do I test this thing? Mm. You know. Okay. I wanna play football. I I've never played football in my life. There's a park. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Y
So I, that's how my week is literally shaped that way. So it's like, I know my son wakes up, Kaya, the smaller one, he wakes up about half past five every day. So we'll spend 30 minutes together while I'm playing guitar, mm. you know. So I'll change him and then he'll sit up and I'll just practice guitar. Mm. So 30 minutes of guitar in the morning with my son. Um, and then he falls asleep and then I'll do some administrative work, emails and stuff. My alarms just keep going off. <laughs> and then mm. it's like, okay, wake Keone up. He has breakfast, mm, mm, get him mm. ready for school, do the school run. At nine o'clock, it's motivational time. So I'll either look for motivational feeds or if I feel like I'm inspired, I'll post mm, something mm. that's motivational. Um, at 9.45, it's vocal training for mm. um, 15 minutes a day, um, except on um, Wednesdays where I have an hour like workout, mm. vocal workout. Um, and then from there, Bear in mind, because I walk Keone to school, I jog around the block when I'm heading home. So that's like right. my exercise yeah, that yeah. I fit in. Mm. Um, and then my alarm goes off at about 10.15, mm. 10.30, in between that time, I can't remember. But it, as soon as it goes off, it's artist management time. Right. So I've got an hour of artist management, which is me dissecting my, my, my brand as an artist mm. and looking at how are we communicating it? Where's the brand sitting? How are we turning the numbers? What do the metrics say? What do I need to invest in? Mm. Mm. And then after that comes about 11-ish or something around the, that time, my alarm goes off again. Um, and it is a writing session, um, which is like a writing prompt session. It's not, it's not in scale. It's like 15 to 20 minutes of me just coming up with ideas. Mm. And then it's lunch. Mm make lunch, have lunch with um, my wife, you know, and the baby as well. At this point, I'm holding the baby most of this time, right? While I'm doing right. all of this other stuff. Yeah. Um, and usually pass the baby to her at one o'clock and then I've got um, my MBA mm. learning mm. for an hour because mm. um, it's online. Mm. Then come two o'clock, I start to basically wrap that up digest what's happened, try and spend about 15, 20 minutes thinking about what I've digested. Mm -hmm. And then half past, get ready, go and pick up Keone from school, mm -hmm. spend about 30 minutes in the car park with him riding around with his friends. We head home about four o'clock. He goes to watch TV or play with his mom. I cook dinner most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, spend the day, like the rest of that time with the family mm. looking after the boys we have food together mm. and then it's bath time bedtime mm. after playing or whatever and then the wife usually she tries to dip away to go and do some stuff at night as well because she mm. works better at night mm. and i'll spend some time just communicating with a few of the people in the business mm. whether it's producers or whatever it is to set up tracks so that right. the next writing session that I have, maybe I might be recording instead of just writing. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's pretty much my, my day. Yeah, Like yeah, in yeah. depth. And yeah. that's just sit with alarms going mm. off. Mm. Saying all the things I need to do. And I replace certain things depending on the energy. So like if I know musically I'll finish the compilation, like the album or the EP, I might replace that creative space with um, the scripting. Right, yeah, stuff. Yeah, So yeah. like I, I was doing scripting beginning of the year. Mm. when I was releasing music because the year yeah, before yeah. I had recorded a ton of music mm, mm. and then it just, just yeah. so it's almost like every three to four months it changes from music to for like yeah, to, keep it fresh keep yeah, it going. yeah yeah to like film and then back to music then to like mm. maybe theater and then back to music mm. and then yeah uh, no no <laughs> you're thinking about somebody like I was saying earlier you know, it's like I'll record like many episodes of Pursuit of Tomorrow and then when I know that's got itself up and running, you know, I'll focus on the photography once I've got a bank of photographs, yeah. like, you know, I'll see what theatre says, see what film is saying, so it's about being able to, I guess, open up your timetable for discipline, yeah. but then also change, and it's it's a hard balance because discipline is, I just call it, it's like positive habits, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, if you're going to keep changing those habits, how do you remain Main. disciplined? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's like no one can you balance it, you know. Yeah, the discipline—it's a good thing that you that you pointed out because 
it's been 20 something years in entertainment i'm only 30 mm. but i've been on stage since i was six mm. um and you just have to realize your life's built up on chapters mm. it's what's relevant at that time to you mm. we put so much pressure on ourselves to try and be good at everything right. that we that we want to do mm. and it's like it's time you know i sing every day i'm not the best singer in the world but i sing every day Mm. because I know that's something that I, I I love to do and I know that's something that I'm I'm hopefully going to be getting paid to do at some mm. point. Mm. You know, I'm going to be on stage. Mm. And if I'm going to get paid to deliver a performance, I have to be ready for it. Right, yeah. You yeah, know, so it's like even acting. I haven't had an acting job in what? Nearly 10 no, less. So about 6 years. Okay. I haven't had a, an acting job. Mm. An actual job that's paying me to, as an actor. Mm. But I still I'm running master classes, like going over master classes. Mm. I'm still making sure I, I train as much as I can whenever I have little pockets of space. Yeah, of course. But that's because when the opportunity does come mm. and I decide that I'm gonna go all in again, I don't wanna be starting from zero. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know? So it's like you just do the things you love. Okay, I let me. There's this thing I say. Do the things you're good at, mm. in order to do the things you love. Right. Yeah. What people don't understand is people will pay you for the things you're good at. Mm. No one will pay you if you're a bad videographer. Right. To shoot a video for them. Mm. But if you're a good videographer, even if you don't enjoy it, mm. you're still gonna get paid for it. Mm. So do the things that you're good at in order to get paid mm. so that you can do the things you love. And hopefully one day those two things will blend. They may or they may not. Because if you when you love something you don't really care whether you get paid or not. True so. Yeah. No, okay, it's, yeah. it's very hard it's a very mm. hard thing like yeah. very few pe people try and then do that thing where it's like, well, how do I get paid for the things I love? Mm. And what happens is it waters down the thing that you love. Yeah, yeah, no. You look at a passion project in in film, and then you look at a project that is put together in order to make money, and you can see a clear yeah. difference. Yeah, no, that's right. Oh. Same thing in music. People trying to cut a pop record in mm. order for it to be mainstream, and then the people just making music. You see the difference. They get to number one. Mm. It's like when you're trying to orchestrate this thing in a, in a certain way most cases it usually doesn't come together yeah. you know it's like oh i want to make millions from my music okay so make music put it out there mm. and then find a way to communicate to the people mm. but make sure that the music is coming from a good place yeah, yeah, yeah. don't now say well this song's dropped everyone loves this style can you imagine if people made a bunch of replicas of gangnam style yeah 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 do you think they'd be as big no nah. of course not so, yeah. so do the things you're good at in order to get paid. And the thing is, you want to, people do this thing where they act like, oh yeah, you want to retire at 30 because you're watching all of these channels and mm -hmm. these young, successful people. I, I retired at the age of 35 because of this investment and that investment and you should do this. And it's like, go look at all the old people. They still want to work because yeah. you're bored. What are you going to do sitting at home? Yeah, yeah. So you might as well do the things that you're good at to get paid. Mm. And then when you, you know, and, and find spaces for the things you love. Because there is time in, the, in your day. You know, we overcrowd ourselves and things like, like you working a job, you're doing this and you're doing other things. And mm. there's time in your day. I've got two kids, a wife. <laughs> mm. Mm. And I still like, I'm, I'm, I'm living with my mother-in-law present. So I also mm. have to cater to her needs. Mm. And she's there. Oh, Jay, can you move this? Jay, can yeah, you do yeah. that? Yeah. And I've got to do that as well. Mm. But there's time in a day. It's, it's not like there isn't time. You mm. know, there is time. It's just what you do with the hours that you, you have. Right, yeah. You know, rather than going, oh, well, I want to try and do everything. It's just like, well, this is the system that I'm putting in place. And this is what I can do on Monday. This is what I can do on Tuesday. This is what mm. I can do on mm -hmm. Wednesday. You know, that's my love. Probably All right. <laughs> <laughs> let me cut this. Let me cut this thing quick. Sorry. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> That being said, there's one final question I have for you. There's obviously 
there's a version of you somewhere in the future that has hit those chapters, who's lived through those experiences, and there's a version of you that, you know, with every day, has has grown beyond what you can possibly imagine. You know, what words of encouragement do you think that version of yourself would have for you as you're sat right here, right now? I think I've lived in that version of myself for, for a very long time. To be honest with you, is I come from a, I think I come from a space where all I do is I tell myself to keep it moving. Mm. You know, um, funny enough, I'm finishing off a book titled "Keep It Moving" um, now, mm. and there's a chapter that talks about when things go right, because <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Is that mm. version of yourself is when everything has yeah. come yeah. together. When things go right, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And you do exactly what you were doing before. Right. You know, my father said to me when I was younger, he said, when you're, before you're successful, you'll have to fetch water. Mm. After you're successful, you still have to fetch water. Mm. Mm. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? Mm. Like, I'm, I'm like baffled by this. Mm. And he, he says, just think about it. He says, <laughs> whatever makes you successful in life, right? You're doing, you're doing something in order to be that person. Yeah. In order to stay that person, you're going to still have to do the same thing. Right, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like that looking back, if that person exists, this other person that we're talking about, mm. looking at me now, I'm sure it's the exact same thing. Is, mm. Dude, right now you're, you're doing this. <laughs> Keep doing it. Like, when things are going right, keep doing what you're doing. Like don't, don't, and having also different levels of success. I think having been at the top of the food chain in, in terms of theater at a very young age in a country that is like, was very at the time, like hooked on the arts and being able to be in newspapers and stuff, that kind of, you experience this young kind of thing this energy where it's like, wow, you're nearly, you're fa nearly famous, mm. you know? Mm. And that can get to your head a little bit. Right. And then you come to a space like England where no one knows who you are and you've got no track record. Mm. And then you're nothing again. Instantly. Right. Oh, just one flight. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like you jump on a plane and you get here and no one knows who you are. Mm. It's like, what? So all of these things you don't amount to nothing nearly. Mm. According to the space yeah, you're in. how it translates into another space, yeah. The only thing you have is you. Mm. And the things that got you those accolades yeah. is, is, is you. That's mm. it. That's all you have. Um, I've been unlucky as well. In, I was homeless for three and a half years in Manchester. I always I was kind of touch on this. Mm. But when I had nothing, the only thing I had, because I was living out of backpack, funny enough, mm. um, the only thing I had was what was here mm. and the knowledge I had acquired over so many years. So when I look at that, the only thing that has kept me going is never ever going, oh, well, I've reached a certain space. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always been like, well, okay, cool. That's a great achievement. What's next? Right. You know, what am I aiming for? You know, even I think after you, I get one blockbuster movie, I'm sure I'll try and get another. Mm -hmm. Once I get one number one, I'm sure I'll try and get another. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that this is me chasing this, the accolades yeah, yeah. of things. Even if it's not a number one, if I get a hundred thousand um, downloads, I want two hundred thousand. If mm. I get one billion downloads, I want two, like you know, mm. I want two billion. Want, mm. But the reason why is because I want the message to get to as many people as possible. Because I know that the core of what I'm doing is to add value to people's lives. So if they can hear what I'm saying, mm. then hopefully I can change their lives. So that person in the future, which I'm saying is probably now, because I live, I mm. live that way, mm. is keep doing what you're doing, keep putting out what you're putting out keep on inspiring people like you have to keep going doesn't matter what happens mm -hmm. this is your makeup this is what you're born to do mm -hmm. is to inspire people that's the core of you you know you're going to add value to people's lives keep doing what you're doing that's it shut your truth sir <laughs> i like that i like that oh, no nah, thank you and yeah thank you for being part of pursuit tomorrow is there anything you'd like to sign off to the camera with 
thank you first <laughs> for having me. Like, thank you for, for doing this, you know, for taking the time to, to, to talk to people and, and pick their brains. Because also by them talking, you'll see a lot of people come to understand themselves better and mm. hopefully also communicate what they're trying to communicate mm. in the right light. You know, um, if there's anything I would like to say to anybody out there is keep keep yeah keep keep talking your truth mm -hmm. until they understand what you're saying right. because don't shift it don't shift it in order to to be politically correct or to try and get more views and more things is just find better ways of, of saying what you have to say because your core of what you're, you if you're here to do if you know what your your god has put you on earth to do don't stray from it in order for, to please the world. Mm. Fine tune it. Find a better way of communicating with people. You know, instead of saying, oh, that will burn you, you know, find a way of showing them. And there's always, and that's what it is, it's the art of communication. Your year is called soft skills. Mm. I'll leave you guys with this. There's a book that you should all, I think, go and read. That is keep it moving by Jerome Aaron when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Dale <laughs> I, I <reset> the plug. <laughs> There's a Dale Carnegie book that um made so much sense to me. Mm. It's um how to um win friends and influence people. Mm. If you've never read that book, anybody that's listening to this, try and get your hands on a copy of that or even listen to the ebook or it's on YouTube. But the core of what Dale Carnegie is saying is be a good person. Mm -hmm. That's more than enough. Is be genuinely interested in the person you're having a conversation with mm -hmm. and be a good person. I like that. I respect that. But yeah, without much more to say myself, I was going to say thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And of course, I'll catch you next week. And then, you know, just one more. Big up and thank you to Jerome. Bless up. Bless up. <laughs> nice one.